February edition of Retail Globe Report. As you can see, we're on a boat. This is the most expensive crossing in the world. It's from Lymington to the Isle of Wight in the UK, the most southerly part of the UK. What we're going to be looking at in this edition is some of the farm markets in this part of the world and some of the marketing in this part of the world. We're going to take you to America, we're going to look at some ideas from Canada. So I hope you enjoy this edition of the February Report. The Isle of Wight is a small island, but he's got a number of retailers that can get a different message across for us. Some of those shops over there are small, therefore they need to bring product outside of the shop just to create that impetus and that wow feeling for the consumer. And then you can go and look at some interesting signage. Arriton Old Village, 100 years behind the times. What a great bit of literature put across there to create a point of difference and they've created the nostalgia retail experience and how about Bluebell's breakfast and a free promotion look at what events are coming along and how you can promote them and farmers were creating the big breakfast and that was an opportunity for some retailers and if you're winning awards why not display those awards even if it's the farm animals and the rosettes that you're winning and in this Bluebell Orchard, they've created some lovely feel by using some convertible backdrops behind the restaurant. If you're open, tell people you're open. And if you are going to close, tell people when you're reopening. You're never closed. You never put a close sign up. You tell people when you're reopening. And how about some straw bales to create that difference on the open sign? Use slanted displays to bring the, foot, the product forward in front of the customer. Tell the customer who made those sausage rolls. Because what people want to see is who was behind the, the, the product that was being sold. So think about your signage. Here are a few facts. Breakfast facts. Again, people want to know the stories behind the events. And we have a lovely opportunity to put those across on a blackboard that makes it an instant event from that point of view. So take a look at what's happening in retail world. Tell people the story. Give them the details when they walk onto a farm shop. They want to know how the farmers prepared the product. And of course, have your favourite products. Muffins and are one of the signature products in this farm shop. It's one of their best sellers. So think about the retailing experience that you're providing your customer. Look at your signage. Talk to your consumers. Give them communicational messages that make a difference from that point of view. One of the reasons for coming to the Isle of Wight was to look at the garlic shop. The garlic shop is a unique retailer because it's taken a very narrow theme of one produce and then looked at how they can add value. Now there's a number of ways you could go in developing a theme. For example, if you look at California and look at garlic there in Gilroy, they've taken a very theatrical approach to it and started looking at the theatre so you get people dressed up in garlic costumes, etc. to create an event. The approach here has been to do something completely different and look at the education. So the history of garlic, how it can be used in cooking. There's even the garlic recipe book here. Now looking at cooking materials and how they can develop an in-depth study on garlic and then use that to get the message across to the consumer. So the next few pictures will take you around the garlic shop and show you how they are developing the educational elements. Every product has a story. The story here is the history and the use of garlic. Buxton Farm Shop, which is in the middle of Somerset in the United Kingdom. This is a farm shop that's got some interesting ideas and low cost effective merchandising that I think could help your business. So let's take a walk around and look at some of those ideas. 
I'm often asked how to build effective round displays. And I mentioned tractor tyres, and a lot of people laugh at me when you mention tractor tyres. What we've got here is a great display. It's circular, it's the right diameter. We've got one tractor tyre, then a round platform, the second tyre, and a second platform being used to sell beer. Tractor tyres in the farming industry are a great merchandising tool to really give the character to the place. One of the key things in this industry is showing how local you are. What this business does, it shows the local farm and the amount of miles from the farm to the farm shop. And they do this for all the farms that are supplying product locally. A great way of bringing that local message across. trade show in Bournemouth in the UK. This is a show providing ideas for farm shops, farmers markets, etc. Some great ideas here. What we've got to think of as retailers is do we want to be modern, do we want to be traditional? What image do we need to put across? And what better if you're trying to create that nostalgia by using bushel boxes. Bushel boxes were used by the apple industry really to handle fruit. Now they're a great thing to use for retailers. And this company actually brands the box with your company name so you can customise it to your business. So bushel boxes are a great way of building displays. One of the challenges for farm shops anywhere in the world is finding equipment that's suitable for them. It's easy for a supermarket to get equipment. It's a lot more difficult for a farmer's market to get the right type of equipment. So Pendred are based in London in the UK and are producing units, individual units with separate foggers. So what you've got is wood that's in keeping with the character of the business, plus then the modernisation to keep the product fresh. Also at the same time, watering can be a challenge. And they've also developed a watering can that can be used and taken around the unit for the small scale. So the equipment is there. Why not check out their website, Pendred, on a shop fitting company that could help you develop your business. We're at Lynn Villa Orchards, which is not far from Baltimore and Philadelphia actually on a NAFMA, a National Farm Market Tour, looking at new ideas that farmers are using in retailing and merchandising. So I want to show you a number of different issues, both at Linella Orchards and other farmers markets, to help you develop your market. Some great ideas in this part of the world, so join me on a tour around some of the markets. American farm retailers have always been exceptionally good at creating theatre and adding value through farm entertainment. So it's not uncommon to see face painting taking place in a garden centre or a farmer's market. And food tasting is critically important when you're trying to sell fruit and vegetables. And the Americans do an exceptionally good job at this. Goat runs? This is something that is common in America that I don't see in other parts of the world. I'm sure there's retailers in other parts of the world that can use a goat run effectively from that point of view. And stuffed animals? This is something else that is common and something that's been used exceptionally well in Levita orchards. Gettysburg is a tourist shop in this area and they do merchandising exceptionally well and Abe Lincoln is there to help promote the products. So let's take a tour around all these various points and see the points of difference that can make a difference. So I hope you enjoy this montage and slideshow of the farmers markets in the USA. Introducing unusual features into the farm so people can walk around the farm and see some of the theatre is something the Americans do exceptionally well from that point of view. They're bold and they're different. Now when it comes to merchandising, think about how you're putting displays together to really get the customer to browse shop. Look at the way the angles are used in this store just to create a bit of difference. It slows the customer down. And it's worth thinking about how can you put the theatre in the store. You should be merchandising up to the site and take positions. And then the stretch position upwards in the store is used for theatre. And Linville Orchards use this exceptionally well to create the theatre above the retail section of the store. 
And then you've got to show depth. How about this for a range of apples that shows the width and the depth that's available in the store? A great way of getting that message across to the consumer. Now when it comes to theatre, one thing this company is exceptionally good at is showing how to build theatre. So I'm going to hand over to one of the experts and show how this orchard has created some theatre displays in their shop and garden centre, just using simple props. Hello, um, these are our animals and they're um, done on a wooden frame and um, then we wrap them in um, chicken wire and get the shape. Um, we use different things to, to get the shape, like these are frisbees. Uh, these are um, plastic fruit of some kind. I think they were a peach. Um, this is a self-hardening clay around the eye. Um, we use a lot of um, recycled plastic, like plastic shopping bags, and then um, I wrapped it with um, garbage bag and duct tape. And then the burlap is put on here. This one, I can feel I used a fabric hardener, um, but a lot of times, so before this year, it was all hand-stitched, no, no hardener, but this one, I think, does. Um, all whip-stitched and held together with the burlap. Um, the, this will last a couple of seasons out, outside. Once you get the house paint, the burlap lasts longer outside. Our last cow was about 12 years old. Um, this is new this year. He's looks, she looks a little dusty right now. Um, but uh, it's all a lot of house paint because it won't fade outside. Um, Right now, you can see Peggy Ann outside the big rag doll, and that's all sheets because they come in big widths, but the sheets will fade, so we've gone to even taking the fabric and taking house paint and making patterns on there so that your color is retained through the season. Um, after you make something like that and you put it up, and then um, before even your crowd comes through, you have fading, so lots and lots of house paint. Um, is a good idea. Uh, we use, reuse frames. The book that I painted out there has um, different seasons for pages, so we'll have an Easter page, and we have a, right now, I think it's the night before Christmas, I just picked, oh, I just opened the book and said, okay, we'll do this. Um, and then that's done with house paint. Uh, I used to use a lot of oil paint thinking that it wouldn't fade, but it really fades a lot. The house paint is the way to go. Um, the big canvases in the back, we um, looked at artist canvases, but they're, it's too expensive, so we go to the um, paint store and get big tarps of canvas. Um, nursery supply. You know, and looking around and saying, oh, this looks like that, like the flower pots in the middle of the daffodils. Um, we use a lot of bamboo. We have a huge bamboo grove on the farm, really strong, and you can get your height. Um, scale, is, scale is fun. You know, when you get something that you think is terrific and then you take it out into your pumpkin land and it goes Phew. So um, trying to make things big and bright has been a lot of fun. Um, when I do paintings for myself, I like real neutral, soft colors. So to push myself into the primaries and the bright colors has been, thanks to Dawn, is something that we um, have been trying because we try to be really kid friendly. Um, for the face boards, we've moved to from marine plywood to an MDO board, which has an already finished. Uh, surface that the sign painters use um, and it holds up really well for the all we do lots and lots of those boards that you put your faces through I don't know if there were any of those on the video or not um, yes mm -hmm. Just outside Baltimore. This is a farmer's market that's been open for about seven months now. So it's still going through some of the evolutionary changes in developing a new business. They moved from a very small farmer's market to a large farmer's market in a purpose-built building. 
what I want to look at is some of the merchandising ideas and give you some suggestions how you can improve your merchandising. When it comes to food retailing, it's easy to do a grid layout and get the customer to go up and down a grid, just like the local supermarket. But working with less than the team in this farmer's market, we try to create a more slow lifestyle approach. There are no straight lines in this store. The aim is to get the customer to browse, to slow them down and do more shopping. Why would we want to do that? To increase the average sale per customer. So think about your store. How can you break that flow up to get people to slow down? So think about creating a curved pattern for the customer flow, not that of the straight road that you find in the supermarket. You need to be looking at lifestyle retail if that is the market that you're looking at. And it's about the layout, the flow that's important in creating the right effect to create that increase in sales. What we've got here is some pallet boxes and some crates being used very effectively to put some merchandising together. Look at the way they've used apples and then associated products. They've taken that associated product to put it at a different angle. But look at the detail we need to think about. When you're using products, make sure the product faces the consumer so they can see the product very easily. Bring the product forward so it really starts to bring the whole display to life. And make sure you've got a whole heap of apples so it really looks full and buzzing. One of the challenges in retailing is what's called relay management. How do we put products on a shelf? And what we've got here is an example of a product that's just been placed on the shelf. How can we improve that? Well, the first thing to do is to bring the product right to the front of the shelf. And look at the airspace there. Can we put product on top of each other to really get a full message across from that point? Make sure the product is facing the customer. So what they're seeing is the front of the product. And don't be afraid to just give one spin so it looks as if it's been shoppable. So think about how you can bring your product to life and really give it that oomph as far as the consumer is concerned. Hope you've enjoyed this edition of Retail Globe Report. Next month we'll be looking at some more ideas from around the world to help you in your business. So till next month, have a good retail month.